All right, hi, my name's Scott Sheffy and I'm with Avenue Real Estate Group and I do all the service for our property management. A lot of the things I like about working with small companies is when I dispatch somebody to the property, I'm talking to the guy that's on the job and the guy that's doing the work and the guy that does the billing and the guy whose phone number I have. Today I've got Justin with Adams Foundation. He does basement repairs, waterproofing, epoxy, and um, polyurethane, we fix street creep, um, we do wall stabilization, um, you know, epoxy injection, somewhat uh, primarily polyurethane injection for waterproofing. And we can, uh, we can go into why we choose polyurethane over epoxy and, and what procedures are best for different types of repairs. Well, polyurethane, I mean, epoxy has always been the go-to, we got a crack in my foundation wall, I need to have it filled with epoxy. Why don't I want to use epoxy? Uh, well, I agree with you there. Uh, home inspectors are always saying, you know, epoxy injection, but it is a very old technology. Um, we found that uh, over time that those, those types of repairs fail. And the reason being is that whether there's, uh, you know, moisture in the wall, uh, or not, the, there's always a pressure variance in the wall. So when there's water present, the water pressure or hydrostatic pressure pushes the water through the crack. Um, whenever there's no uh, moisture present, there's still ground pressure. So whenever we go and inject a, a product like epoxy, um, you, we're fighting a ground pressure. So you know, whenever you see those little plastic ports on the wall, um, right. usually it starts down low and then they go about one foot or strategically if the crack kind of separates off or whatnot, but um, whenever we inject from the bottom, say we squeeze the pump two times and it starts to come out that next port, and we know that we didn't go eight inches thick, 12 inches up and fill that entire void. Um, so what's happening is, is that ground pressure is fighting us. So at the end of the injection from the bottom to the top, you're essentially only getting about this much epoxy in that crack all the way up. Then you take uh, about 18 to 24 hours for the epoxy to cure. Uh, and as you have that, that curing time with the variances of ground pressure, at the end of the day, you end up with a crack that's injected with about one foot of product. And over time, you know that epoxy paste may crack a little bit because of a little additional shifting in the in the foundation which is normal um, you will create leaks so what we do is we use polyurethane in in a wet crack situation so with polyurethane whenever you inject it you inject it just like epoxy but it it expands exponentially for about five minutes until until it cures so you actually get a full fill all the way through the foundation all the way up the top where it'll actually ooze out of the top of the crack and run down the face of the wall and then you know that uh, you know it's been properly filled and it's uh, it's it's not rigid it's it's like rubber so if there is a little bit of shifting in the foundation and that epoxy cracks well that rubber in there is still intact so despite it cracking it still won't uh, you know, produce a leak. Justin, sometimes we have a uh, an older house that develops uh, a crack and some of the vendors we send out, uh, they seem like this is their opportunity to shine and they come back and it needs a full waterproofing system and piers and all kinds of things like that. What's your, what's your take on that? Oh, I think that comes back to overhead. You know, they've got a lot of overhead. They've got uh, multiple crews, a big office, uh, TV advertising, radio advertising. Everything we do is through networking and word of mouth. Uh, so we don't need to be uh, dishonest per se and, and suggest that someone needs something that they don't need. Uh, we had a, a situation recently where we went over to this little old lady's house and she had just a very common horizontal crack that was due to uh, rusted rebar in the foundation. And um, we suggested that uh, it would be proper to just chip out that loose concrete, epoxy coat the rebar, and then pack it full, and then carbon fiber over the top. More than sufficient will prevent future damage. Uh, three of my competitors told her that she needed piers. Piers are very expensive and and it, completely unneeded for this situation. So there's there is a lot of dishonesty in foundation repair. Um, we actually. Uh, we work with Dynapeer, that's the product that we do peering with, and they've got a team of engineers that we can uh, bounce ideas off of and submit elevations. And, um, you know, it takes the dishonesty out because there's, a, there's another party involved. Good. 
So uh, whenever we go see a house and we're like, okay, your elevations are low, uh, I think you're going to need this, but we submit everything to Dynapier and they come back and say, no, Justin, you need it on six foot centers because it's only a ranch style house. Uh, you don't need them every four feet. So at times we can save customers a heck of a lot of money uh, by, by going through that. Good. I know that you've got three different crews uh, that do specific type of repairs, but are you on every job site and make every bid and available via phone and email to answer questions for your customers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the phone number that we give out is 636-485-8018, and you can call or text. Um, that does go to me or Olivia, uh, but Olivia usually rides with me uh, every day. So, uh, yes, I do all the estimating and we go to every job site, uh, typically at the beginning to just ensure that, that the guys have everything. Now, as far as crack repair, our guys are pretty self-sufficient on the cracks. Uh, I estimate it, we do a scope sheet, I provide it to my, to my employee and he goes there and does the job. Uh, but on the bigger projects like wall stabilization, peering, drain tile, you know, the big ticket items, uh, I'm there pretty frequently to ensure that the job's done right. So do you require a down payment to get started, and if so, how much, and what kind of payment do you um, offer? It, it's really situational. Okay. Uh, sometimes we will accept payment at closing if, if we need to do that to accommodate folks. Um, uh, on, a, on a big project, we like to get 50% down, uh, but just depending on the situation, you know, there's, there's been times where we'll just, on a handshake, you know, on a ten thousand dollar job, that their home equity loan is going to come through. Uh, so uh, there, there's a little bit of a gamble. We haven't uh, lost out too bad. Credit uh, cards. Yeah, we take credit card. Um, we do credit card cash discounts. Uh, you know, we're very flexible as far as uh, payment options. So Justin, in the area that we work in, we have a lot of old houses. Some of them have concrete. Uh, block foundation, some actually have limestone foundation, and we run into a lot of foundation problems, and sometimes we might need drain perimeter drainage systems, and or there actually is structural problems. Uh, how as a homeowner do I look for that, and how can you help me? Sure, sure. Um, well, when it comes to block wall or uh, limestone foundations, those are kind of the hardest to waterproof. You'll, you'll see that with limestone over time that the grout between those stones breaks down and turns to sand. Seen that. And uh, a lot of times in the city you've got the concrete gangways between the buildings where you can't improve the exterior drainage. So your only real option there is to put in dimple board with an interior drain tile system. Um, uh, you know, concrete block foundations, uh, you cannot waterproof with like polyurethane injection. Uh, they're just too porous and a lot of times those blocks are hollow. So there you might need dimple board and a drain tile system as well. And essentially what a dimple board is, is it's, it's like a, a plastic sheeting that will allow the water to come in, but it keeps it contained behind that plastic and then that plastic is tucked into your interior drain tile. Okay. Um, interior drain tile can be used on really any type of foundation. Uh, more so than not, it's on poured concrete foundations, what, what we do those in, and uh, the process involves essentially uh, breaking out the floor about 15 inches away from the wall, digging down next to the footing and installing a 4-inch socked perforated pipe, uh, encasing that in clean gravel, and then utilizing something called hydro channel, which is a kind of a, a plastic that uh, is shaped somewhat like this, and it leans up against the wall and we pour concrete over that. That allows the water when it comes in hydrostatically where the floor and the wall meet to just go right underneath that hydro channel, drop right into our four inch sock pipe, and then it goes and flows downhill to the uh, sump pit and then pumped out. Pumps it back outside. Yeah. Uh, so what about, uh, I have a wall that's leaning a little bit or I'm during a home inspection and uh, my inspector says, you know, you've got some structural problems here. Uh, those are things that you can solve as well with peering? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, if, if a wall's bowing in, you need something more like a wall anchor system. Uh, a wall anchor system could be uh, something along the lines of if your wall's leaning in two or three inches, uh, again, we would go to, to an engineer and say, hey, you know, 
uh, how many feet on center should we do this? Mm -hmm. uh, because if, if the lean is a little bit more than, than what we want, uh, we're going to have to stabilize it more securely. So if it's only got a two inch lean in, we might be able to go every eight feet on our anchors. Um, typically anchors are like one inch, one inch all thread rods. Uh, the plates are two foot by two foot by half inch thick. And we'll run those out to the yard about 12 to 15 feet and then um, have an exterior pier outside where at the end of that rod is another plate and then we put about one yard of concrete over the top of that plate. Then okay. we can tighten it down on the inside. So you're not actually pulling the wall back, you're just stabilizing it where it is. Exactly. Um, the only way to, to really pull up a wall is to completely excavate on the exterior of the foundation and uh, you have to detach the house from the sill plate. So you have to support and raise the house a little bit, excavate on the outside, and then pull it up, which is probably five times more expensive than using like an earth anchor system. But really, if it's only a couple inches leaning in, then it's sufficient. So, Justin, thank you very much for stopping by quickly this morning. And can you give us your phone number and your website one more time? Absolutely. The phone number is 636 485 8018 and you can call or text and the website is www.adamsfoundationrepair.com and I do appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome and the next 10 callers get 50% off any basement repair they need. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>